Yes, one of the better books that I've read recently is by uh, Dr. Sherman Jackson, um, Islam and the Problem of Black Suffering, and this is something I would recommend to every Muslim to read. If you skew academic, you are kind of more into theory and, and um, theoretical books, nonfiction, then I would definitely recommend this book um, for a couple reasons. One is that it gives you a nice bird's eye view of kind of the map of uh, the schools of thought regarding Islamic theology and Aqidah. And I find that it does so in a very um, in a very academic way and a very sort of um, objective way. Right? A lot of times books about Aqidah, they get polemical. Right? And so from the intro, you know that this person is going to refute X or he's going to support X or etc. Right? He doesn't do that. He takes one particular problem and he kind of takes you through the steps of how these different sort of movements or schools would deal with this problem. So he lays it all out in front of you and you're able, he shows instead of telling. That's the nice thing, right? He, he's able to show you sort of the different ways that these different schools or movements would interpret certain things um, as opposed to telling you that this one's right and this one's wrong. Um, and I think that that has tremendous merit, right? Not everybody likes to be told what to believe. That's just reality. And some people like to figure it out for themselves and it's easier for them to kind of see it worked out on paper. Um, that being said, he has commitments and he spells them out, frankly, um, but it doesn't necessarily take away from the academic quality of his work. And actually he, in, in the book, is a really nice and robust defense of sort of um, the traditionalist school, the Ethari school of Aqidah, whatever we want to call it. Um, he shows how rationality and reason is not just one thing and that there's what he calls a regime of sense that the companions had, that the early Muslims had before they were subject to external influences um, and sort of prefabricated categories of thought that then later theologians tried to cram the Quran and the Sunnah into and try to make it fit. So it's not just um, somebody saying, well, here's, a, here's vanilla chocolate and uh, pistachio ice cream and you just have your pick. He has a commitment, he has a belief that you know, one of these is more faithful to the tradition than the others, but he is respectful of the reader enough to, to kind of like show instead of telling him to let you figure it out for yourself.